Good gravy, sweet mother of pearl. What do you say? What do you know? How's tricks? How's the kids? Rubbing elbows, greasing palms, schmoozing, networking. Movers, shakers, trendsetters, go-getters, gypsies, tramps, and thieves. Every single one of you crazy crats crawling on top of another like hermit crabs crawling out of a bucket. We're goddamn champions. Listen to me. If my pauses were any more pregnant, my punchline's water would break. Bow! Bada bang, they're fucking jokes. My name is Bob, <laughs> and thank you for joining me on the first ever audition of Hardest Part of the Ring, the uh, the only uh, not, not insane, sensible, middle-of-the-road podcast. There's no agenda here. There's no famous wrestling personalities ass I'm trying to kiss. There's nobody I'm working for and, and not talking about it. No one I'm related to. No one. There's no agendas here. I'm 40, I'm a failed indie wrestler, trained by Alpha the Wild Samoan WWE Hall of Famer like two decades ago. I'll name drop to give myself credibility here and there, but who the hell am I kidding? But I was trained by people who knew what they were doing, and I have 14 years in the uh, stand-up comedy business, uh, and no one's heard of me, and that's fair, it's a good critique, uh, let me know in uh, comments or by email, bobhansonjokes at gmail.com, uh, how much I failed at it, because I, I wasn't sure... Uh, but I've had my hand in the entertainment cookie jar for quite a while, and now that I'm older than most of the roster, and I, I, I feel I can look back objectively, and making every mistake that there is to make, I could look back and catch some mistakes, and uh, hopefully add something that most of the, the other wrestling podcasts and wrestling podcast personalities, if there is a thing, uh, have, been, uh, have been telling you, because... They have their they have their ways, they have their agendas, they have their slants, and me, I'm I'm not expecting to do anything with this or make a dime of it, but I need to rattle off because I'm between moving um, moving between two coasts at the moment, and I'm in the woods in Jersey for the time being. I have no one to talk to, and this is my wrestling podcast, the hardest part of the ring, named after that uh, the really annoying cliche they talk about every time someone gets slammed on the ring apron, uh, and I hate those bumps, by the way. I hate them in excess. I like most of these things, but I just don't like them in excess. Hardest part of the ring. Let's talk about Raw, okay? Now, let me get uh, this out of the way, too. I talk about Raw. I talk about NXT, the Hulu version. There's a $7.99 month limited commercial interruption. Why? I don't have a television. I'll talk about SmackDown Live, just the YouTube clips, because I don't have a television. I'll talk about WWE NXT UK because I like letters and because I have the network, but... I don't have television. That show is not on television. But if it wasn't television, couldn't see it. Don't have a television. And of course, every pay-per-view on the WWE Network is streaming live, and you can get that network for only $9.99 a month. With um, yeah, The first month is free, I believe, so there's no commitment, plus original programs such as WWE Ride Along, but not so much right now, because everyone's going mass and they got a bad disease. And you could see all your superstars, past and present, in extensive libraries of every pay-per-view that's ever happened. WWE Network, anytime you want your mobile device by downloading WWE app, sign up today. Thumbs up. No one's paying me a dime. I'm an asshole. That's why I did that. Let's talk about Raw. October 19th, 2020. It's the only Raw October 19th, 2020 edition that will ever happen. And we open with a season premiere of the new program you see every week. <laughs> and they have a new opening, and it's it's hip-hop, which is good. We need a change. I'm not a hip-hopper guy. My favorite band is Iron Maiden, and Guns N' Roses is a very close second. But we needed the change. I do miss the rock and roll intro for the last year that had a drummer that looked like Dakota Kai, but isn't Dakota Kai, but looked like Dakota Kai. But my Dakota drummer is gone, and she was the one who would go, Legendary! Do -do -do -do. You rewatch it, or don't. It's a waste of time, you know. Hug a tree. I don't know what the fuck to tell you. Uh, so, new intro with the new people who've been drafted, and the draft that isn't a draft. Cool. Alexa Bliss comes out of here, and she's standing there in the ring. The announcers didn't see her the entire time. They were talking about the matches we were going to see, and Alexa decides to let us uh, know that The Fiend is here. She introduces The Fiend, and before we talk about The Fiend, Alexa is... Yeah, they're all hot, by the way. I acknowledge all of their hotness, okay? So, in addition to hotness, yeah, I get it. Uh, Alexa, much like Carmella, knocks... Every wacky thing they give her out of the park. You know, she, she doesn't phone anything in, even when it's preposterous. And they're, her and, and, and working with The Fiend, too, have did everything they could on this entire show 
to make us scared of the presence of a five foot tall, like ninety eight pound woman. And no offense, I mean, I know, I know she's athletic, and you know, could probably kick the asses of of most m- m- women in America. I guess I don't know. Uh, you based on athleticism alone, she. Um, you know, she's standing next to these monsters now because really the bulk of her angle is her and all these dudes. And and she's, she's a smaller woman and these are big dudes. So, you know, to make just her, her presence, she's convincing you that there's trouble when you see her. And, and for the most part, I believe her. Um, she does, she's doing great. And yeah, there's some prepos- preposterousness to it. But she's uh, she's knocking it out of the park, as I say. She introduces the fiend. I'm the biggest Bray Wyatt fan there is. I love seeing the fiend on uh, regular TV and not just pay per views. Uh, I still hope they don't overdo it because it's not going to feel special. A fiend entrance every week in the Thunderdome is not going to feel special. But I was happy happy to see it here because I I think it meant something. It depends on what their goal is and who they they want to go with. And they're not going with Retribution. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. Retribution comes out, I think, don't tell me Retribution's names ever, uh, Shane Thorne, I think, the one in a white uh, hockey mask, he slaps the announcer table to tell them we're here and we're loud and we're making a noise to scare you, and Mia Yim, who's standing behind him, does the exact same thing, slaps the table, and it was almost comical, and uh, I don't know what they were trying to prove, and that's they just came around, they used to break lights and make the lights flicker and they really had a problem with lights and now they slap things and they went to the ring apron and they slapped the ring apron which every wrestling manager does during the match but they they smacked it hard and they better be not hurt their hands because the ring apron it's the hardest part of the ring so we have this match and lashley shoots whoever dijakovic is is now he shoots dijakovic off the ropes and twice in the middle of an irish whip from the right to the left side of your screen, the Dijakovic dominant guy, he fixes his mask twice before he hits the rope for whatever they did. That can't be comfortable. Okay, the dude, when you have your head down, you're, you've lost confidence. When you when I used, when I wrestled the first time, I remember all the matches I'd watch. I didn't get contact lenses yet, but I'm blind as a bat. So when you're not wrestling with your glasses, I always had my head down. I always had my head down. I had another stint later in San Diego. Who the hell cares? None of this is important. But I had contact lenses by then, and I was at my 5'11 and change. I'm standing as tall as I can be. The confidence isn't there. Before the women's revolution, so many of the, the divas, as they were called, all wrestled with their heads down. The whole era of uh, the Bellas and Maurice and that, that whole time frame, Eve Tor, they all had their, head, had their heads down. They have long hair, too, so you can't see them, and it just looks... It just looks less confident and like they don't believe in what they're doing. And I hate to see a guy who's huge and would have, I think, three or four awesome Keith Lee matches on NXT. This big, imposing uh, Dominic Dijakova guy who who turns heads when walking into a room, probably. Just have his head down and play with his mask. And, he, and after a couple of commercial breaks, he does tap out to Bobby Lashley's Hurt Lock. Uh, in the middle is a commercial break if you were watching Hulu. In my area, Kevin Hart, uh, who is not related to the legendary Hart family of Calgary, uh, wants us to have Chase credit cards, and there's a bathfitter.com or something like that. Anyway, this match went a couple of segments, and uh, not only did they lose to the Hurt business, not only did The Fiend and uh, Alexa Bliss run away from them uh, shortly before this, or escape them before this match, uh, even the announcer's table won't sell for these guys because that damn thing wouldn't break. Uh, I think the fiend tried to put, uh, the guy who looks like the predator, uh, through the thing and it just didn't bust. And that was that. But, uh, well then Alexa bliss shows up on the big screen and apparently Alexa, unfortunately, despite her, um, her very, uh, the physical business has taken up smoking and her voice was horrific as she told us to let him in. But he was already in, so I really don't know what the instruction was for. Uh, but yeah, so uh, so the fiend, you know, beat up some retribution guys, and there's another break. We have highlights of Braun Strowman and Keith Lee. Guess what, folks? This match did not make Hulu. Remember, I'm telling you what happened on the Hulu version of Raw. So if I skip a match, that means it wasn't important enough in WWE's eyes to make Hulu. So if it's a women's tag match and the title isn't involved, that never makes Hulu. The 24-7 stuff? 
never makes Hulu unless it's like a 10 second thing in the back. Uh, the Street Profits and their tag titles for several months, almost none of it made Hulu. Just letting you know. So if I miss it, that's why. It's a 90 minute action packed version of WWE Raw for a three hour show. So Alexa has to quit smoking. Braun and Keith have highlights. They put each other uh, through some cardboard boxes. AJ Styles comes out with Mr. Hughes. Nah. <laughs> I don't know who that dude was. I mean, AJ comes out with a very tall man. I guess he was the bouncer of the uh, underground thing, which isn't happening anymore. I remember when it came out, uh, texting back and forth with uh, a man, Brian Yang, over in uh, Twitter world. He, um, I remember telling him, hey, this is going to be done in a month, and only the bouncer is going to make anything of this, because he's like the biggest dude, and he's not fighting, and he's the only person not made to look foolish uh, on a weekly basis. And wouldn't you know it, uh, AJ Styles now has Giant Gonzalez in his corner. They do a slow-mo of Matt Riddle's flip-flops flying around. Um, and then they do a gimmick with the referee who is scared of the man. And this was actually kind of cool because the referee was acting like a referee. Like, hey, I'm just trying to do my job. Get out. And then he kind of started like almost comically whining and crying like you wouldn't in real life. You would just be like, all right, I'm not going to fight you, dude, but I I do have to disqualify this guy. So when it, when it became, to, oh, please, it's, it's my job. I'm just doing the best. I got a, you know, a wife and a kids and a house plant and yada, yada. It was like, ah, oh, you had it. And you had to throw too much crap on it. Like you ever, like you ever let a seven-year-old like choose your your cake or your ice cream toppings like okay chocolate chips are great some fudge is great but why now there's gummy bears and now there's there's popcorn and there there's a leg of lamb in the goddamn ice cream with just too many cooks here uh there's a commercial for uh philadelphia cream cheese so um definitely enjoy that i like that with a, with a, with an everything bagel there's some distractions by the big man. Um, AJ Styles wins with the Clash after distraction. You're one, two, three. AJ better win because if AJ loses this thing, then it actually hurts the big man worse because now he's completely ineffective. So, so far, it is a good show. Everything's making as, as much sense as it could for this year. Then there's a video package for Orton and Drew telling us Orton's going to talk later. So there's a promo. Anyone just cut promos anymore? Just come out and say, hey... Lady with a microphone, hey, dude in a bow tie, let me tell you what's going on, and then I tell you what's going on, and then I tell you what I just told you, what do you say, what do you know, tip the veal, try the wages, did I say that earlier, it's going to happen, waka waka, where's the beef, walk like an Egyptian, we're having a good time here. Uh, Drew McIntyre asked Charlie Caruso if he can do the interview on his own, which is preposterous, because wouldn't she be only holding the microphone anyway for what he did, why did she have to get out of the camera shot? But he had to do that. She was just going to hold the microphone. He wasn't doing anything she couldn't do. Her arms work, okay? She's a physically fit gal. But nevertheless, Drew is uh, not happy with uh, Randy Orton. And they're going to um, collide in a, in a big red thing. Lana uh, has entrance music still. A lot of catchy tune. If you're not, uh, you know, shimmying and shaking to that bad boy at home, uh, you got no soul, man. They show Battle Royal highlights. Of course, um, Nia Jax has to put someone through a table and uh, take none of the bump herself. <sighs> Asuka entrance, uh, enters as well. And during the intros, this bugged me. Do none of the women have hometowns anymore? I mean, they've never announced women's weights. I'm like, okay, I think they should. If, if it was a sport, you would announce them the same way you would the men. If we're pretending it's real, and I guess we gave up on that. You know, I'm so old. Uh, but nevertheless, she was introduced as, and the challenger, Lana. And then right after that, I said, okay, they're going to say from, forgive me, I don't know what part of Japan Asuka's from, but they said, and then the WWE Raw Women's Champion, Asuka. Where the hell are these people from? They just, they just appeared one day, like, never mind, the, uh, it's bad enough. None of them have last names anymore. Now they don't even, now they're not even from anywhere. They're just from the Thunderdome. Everybody lives there. When the lights go out, they take the ropes off the ring and fight to make it less safe. That can't be safe, by the way. Those things with no ropes are moving all over the place, and someone probably got hurt. Uh, Lana does this move. Uh, I hate this move because it's so overdone, and she did it okay. But this this pinning combo that a certain crop of NXT women 
do there's there's little habits when they all come they all kind of show up on tv at the same time they all do some kind of some of the same stuff lana does the thing where she blocks the hip toss and then reaches in with her right arm to grab oscar's right leg and does like a pinning combo out of it and lana didn't do a bad job in this match i know she's not everybody's favorite not on the interwebs and all the yada yada but i mean it was it wasn't too long Asuka won. She tapped her. I thought Lana was, was a, Lana was a bit too competitive with Asuka for my taste, but it wasn't bad. It was just that, I don't know, some of those habits were shown. Like, for example, Sasha and Bayley used to both do this, and it drove me bananas. They would do, I call it the Scooby-Doo pin, because I don't know what to call it. They'd hook both legs, and their backs are on, on top of uh, their opponent's chest, I guess, and as, as they're arching they're slipping both their feet in and out, which would take all of the pressure off of the pin. But it looks like when Scooby-Doo and his friends start running away from the guy in a scary mask because their feet are just go flying and in, in one spot for a second, and then they take off. And neither one of them does it anymore. They're, actually, they're both really awesome. They used to both do it at the same time for like a couple of years on both Raw and SmackDown. It would drive me a bit. It just looks so goofy. But it was certain classes when... Everybody's trained the same and by the tra trained by the same people. You, you see a lot of that stuff. And that goofy hip toss combo, when it's done fast and well, it's it's awesome. But it's like, uh, she did it fine, but I'm just sick of seeing it. <laughs> Asuka taps her out. Nia comes out, of course. Um, I didn't realize Shayna was coming, too. I forgot there were women tag champions. Uh, she breaks the table with mostly Lana again, and uh, the table is sold for Lana, but that damn table ain't selling for retribution. Uh, what happens next? Oh yeah, Asuka fought back on Shayna Ben. Asuka Shayna is the match that I want to see. I think that's really the match everybody else wants to see. We uh, go to some clips right now. Five months ago, a car hit Elias, and Sheamus made it look like it was Jeff Hardy, but it's probably really Sheamus anyway because he was mad at Jeff Hardy at the time for not doing drugs anymore. And then Elias does his big concert. He sings a song. It's not half bad. Yeah, he sings another song. I was like, okay, we're, we're doing this. Then he sticks around for way too long. Everyone and their mother knows Jeff's going to attack him. Uh, we have a wacky mask guy who plays a heavy metal riff. And of course, lo and behold, it is Jeff Hardy. And Jeff takes this wild swing with the guitar to bust the microphone. And I, I thought that was tremendous. But it was, a, it was a long way to get there, folks. It's like when a comedian tells that, like, that five-minute setup for that punch that was worth 15 seconds waiting for. We take another break. We come back. The New Day is is the Raw Tag Team Champions. They did a little switcheroo with the Profits. Uh, Sheamus is, comes out. He's upset with positivity. And after they fight about positivity, they tell him to use lotion. And then Kofi and Sheamus wrestle. Uh, they do the old classic. Oh, they brought this one back. Babyface does a dive commercial break. The old divey commercial break. Uh, it was a good match. I just I felt like they were fighting about nothing. So, yeah, I couldn't really get too invested in it. I like seeing, you know, the guys together on, on TV. Uh, Kofi goes over with his finish. One, two, three. They showed E on the Thunderdome. And that's fun. I like that they're sneaking people we know, legends, and just people on other shows and goofing around, showing them in the dome, reminding us it's there. I, I guess my understanding is the Thunderdome is going away in the near future, so they want to get all they can out of it. We cut to uh, Ali is doing a promo. He, uh, he admits he's the hacker really quick. We just do a, by the way, that was me. Um, not really much to say. I guess he's... He said that uh, there, they, he was more than just strength and numbers, but that's weird because the the group used to have eighty four members, and now there's um, there's none, um, or there's four or five of them, and one woman, one woman, which really kind of limits the matches that they could have, because you know, I don't know, whatever. Uh, it's gonna be gone in two weeks. Titus tries to join the hurt business, and he fails. They beat him up. Uh, at first I asked myself, well, what the hell was the point of that? And then it occurred to me, I think the point is they're trying to remind us 
that the Hurt Business are still bad guys. They just had to finish their thing at Retribution. And if they're going to go with one of the two heel groups, I guess they went, they went with Hurt Business. So they're reminding us the Hurt Business is still bad. So don't cheer them just yet. So I don't know what Hurt Business is going to do next. Maybe make a run at a uh, New Day. Two of them. I guess MVP is like the manager, half sometimes wrestler of the group. Um, Lashley has got the, what do you call it? The U.S., I think. The, he doesn't bring it on TV. So that must be real important to him to win a prestigious title. I don't know. Yeah, maybe Cedric and Shelton will go after New Day, or that's just a match you can do. I do not know the answer. And maybe there were some clues in some matches that I didn't see on Hulu. Let me know in the comments. I don't know what happened next, guys. I probably scratched my balls a few times. I'll tend to do that. Ah, uh, yes, we had a fun house, and Alexa shows up at the fun house, and this was cool. I liked Alexa in the fun house. I thought it was just visually different. She had the big smile and the hair and the outfit standing in front of Bray. I don't know why we spent like two or three minutes just going over the history of killing the rabbit puppet all that time. And I didn't understand. Yeah, I thought it was just or we were just filling space here. Uh, speaking of fill, spill, filling space, Braun Strowman is next. And do we take a he enters, we take a break. So Keith loses this thing with a low blow. Uh, I had a feeling that they needed to uh, give one back to their boy Braun. They love Braun. They're going to give us Braun forever, whether we want him or not. Uh, I cheered up a little bit. Keith turned around. He did the kick in the groin and trash-talked Braun and still left him laying. So I was like, okay. And yes, I know it's the classic 50-50 thing. My guess is on, on a website sometime this week, they're going to say, oh, yeah, and Keith and Braun will have a fight at the Hell in a Cell thing. Which makes perfect sense. Like, oh, they need they, they need some matches, and I think they I think I thought they were already forgetting about Keith. It kind of seemed like it because Keith and Braun's thing last week didn't make Hulu. Just so you know. So if you're watching, so that wasn't deemed important enough. We have these two monsters putting each other through so much cardboard, and they didn't want they didn't think we needed to see it. Uh, so I was happy, like, okay, Keith, because I'm big on Keith, and I think we just need a new face. Uh, a new a new big guy to shake things up. He's the perfect one for it. So and so this loss, you know, I grumbled for a second and then kind of took a breath and going, all right, he's fine. You know, I mean, he has to beat Braun though. That's the thing. That is the problem there. Uh, and lastly, on the Hulu version of WWE Raw on October nineteenth of twenty twenty, Randy Orton has a um, a town hall meeting inside the cell. He tells us about all his matches. Um, he reminds us he and Sheamus wrestled in this thing once. Who knew? So he, apparently him and Cena have done it twice. I knew about one of them. And he mentions the dead man at the end, which is good because I kept saying, what about the, the most important one of all? Anyway, Drew comes out. There's a little bit of na 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 You can't get to me. na 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 boo You know, you can't touch me. Drew had some bolt cutters hidden. Next to the uh, computer screens, somehow he just he anticipated the problem. I thought it was just going to be under the ring, honestly, but I was wrong. Uh, he gets in there, and what the hell happened? I watched this. He ran in there. Did they make contact? Nobody gave each other a finish. I think it just ended with a... Orton, yeah, you were Drew yelling something about your ass is mine. I remember that was the end of it. Yeah, I just watched this. I don't know what happened. So it, it caught me. Um, it was riveting stuff. Uh, this is a good Raw. You know, I'm not trying to shit on all of it. And um, I'm not trying to be that guy. Well, here's what they should have done. Well, uh, here's how I would book it. A wrestling guy that you've never heard of. Um uh, my, I had a, I had a contact from my friend at the wrestling onlooker Wade Seltzer, and he uh, together we came up with a uh, we came up with some stars for the matches. So Keith and Braun, I got forty six stars. Um, Kofi and Sheamus only got seventeen stars. The Hurt Business eight man thing with Retribution that got um, I got four hundred and twenty stars. And uh, Asuka versus Lana got 112 stars. And uh, the song Amen by Elias got six stars. But the segment only got five stars. 
the Kevin Hart Chase credit card commercial got six stars. Oh, what else? Are there any other matches? I wouldn't know. Okay. And the production crew got uh, five stars. I thank you for joining me on, hey, one of them's got to be the first, okay, of uh, the hardest part of the ring. My name is Bob. I'm going to join you in a couple of days for NXT on Hulu with limited commercial interruption and WWE UK. Maybe I'll just combine those two or do something like that. I hope you enjoyed uh, whatever it just happened. This is the first one. Again, I may never even air this one. I will. To hell, I don't, you know. I'm too vain not to do it. All right, you can find the hardest part of the ring on podomatic.com, P-O-D-O-M-A-T-I-C.com, podomatic, and I'll probably do the old YouTube clip with just one picture thing, you know, and just kind of, you know, you look at something else while you listen to that kind of dealy. That's how I listen to most of my podcasts, honestly, and I, you know, maybe you can subscribe too. It's on podomatic.com, top and type in Bob Hansen, H-A-N-S-E-N, hardest part of the ring. Uh, there you go. That is my uh, not insane, sensible, middle of the road, moderate wrestling podcast deal. Uh, I will have uh, projects coming up. I'm going to be talking to uh, Mountain Shark Mulligan and get his views on, on new wrestling. He doesn't like it. And also, um, I'm going to have an exclusive interview with uh, Wade Seltzer, and he's going to explain the star system to me because I never understood it. Um, did I forget? Oh, yeah, AEW. I just don't um, I don't have a television. I mentioned this before. So I'll check out a YouTube clip of AEW when I can. I, I just don't have access to watch the show. But sometimes I'll watch, watch a clip. Sometimes I'll like a thing here and there. A lot of times I won't. Um, I'm a very old man. Abe Lincoln had the day off on my birthday. So that's the way it's just going to be. I used to love NWA Power like a year ago on YouTube. I was so big on that. I wished I would come back. I would never review it because it's just going to be me saying, oh, this is so cool. Like That's not a very good review. So this Raw, I give the entire Raw 214 stars. Uh, thank you for listening to the hardest part of the ring. The Queen of England is a lizard. Have a good week, everybody.